All right, so I have in this box a couple items. I'm going to set them out on the table here. These items represent you, right? Yeah, they represent your life. Things are good, right? Things are going smooth. Things are happy, but guess what? Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes life happens. Yeah, I will warn the people right here. I have not tested this yet, so I have no idea how much it's just going to go. So, right. So, if any of you lose an eye, it's Wade's fault. He told me I could speak tonight. Yeah. All right. But yeah. So yeah, this this is your life, right? Things are going good, right? Until they aren't, right? Maybe things are going well, and then situation comes up at home, right? Maybe mom and dad's relationship isn't too, doing too well. Maybe mom and dad are headed towards a divorce. Yeah. Right? Whew. It, it, it is. I got it for 99 cents at Goodwill. All right, yeah. What about at school? Right? School sucks. That's, that's unfortunate. Right? But what if, you know, maybe you, got, maybe you got parents who are real strict and they expect straight A's. But guess what? You just failed that math test. And you know you're in for it when you get home, right? Ooh. It did break. I can, I can confirm. <laughs> yeah! Right? What about, what about that relationship? Right? We just got done talking about love, sex, and dating. Right? What about that relationship that maybe you made some mistakes in already? You went too far, and you don't know what to do. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. What about, what about that sin in your life? You know the one I'm talking about. That sin that you keep buried down so far because you don't want anybody else to know about it. Because you know that in your mind, you keep telling yourself that if somebody else knew about it, there's no way they'd ever look at you the same. And so you keep it buried down where nobody can ever find it. And pretty soon, with all these things in life, you end up feeling a lot like these broken dishes here. Like your life is in shards and you don't know what to do. So in Japan, they actually have a thing with, with the, that they do with these broken pottery like this. It's an ancient art form called kintsugi. You actually can see an example of it up on the screen there in the background. What they do is they take these broken pieces of pottery and they put them back together. And they don't just put them back together in a way to be able to hide the cracks and hide where it was broken. But they do it in a way that highlights it and makes it beautiful. They take each piece and a master craftsman will come and he'll sand down the edges. And they'll apply a resin and carefully put the pieces back together. And while the resin is still wet, they'll actually dust it with a powdered gold so that it comes out looking like that. It takes something that is worthless and makes it priceless. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. If you need a Bible, you can run off to the, the fireside room and grab one real quick. Or you can pull out your phones if you have them. All right, we're going to be in Luke chapter 15 tonight. All right, so Luke chapter 15, we're going to be starting in verse 11. Now, this is a pretty familiar story if you've grown up around the church. And so I'm not going to read it directly. You guys will do that in your small groups tonight. But I'm going to tell the story as we go, one little bit at a time. So it starts off, Jesus is talking here. And he says, there was once a man with two sons. The younger son comes to him and says, Dad, give me my share of the estate. Give me my inheritance. And so the father divvies up what he has between his sons. Now we're going to stop right there. Because there's a very important point I want you to get. You can see it on the screen. God wants us to choose him, but he gives us the freedom not to. God could make us that we always choose him, we always do what's right, and we're just little robots doing whatever God wants. But that's not how God created us. He created us so that we have a choice. Right? In the story, you get the, the two sons, and the, the younger son says to dad, give me, give me my inheritance. Well, what's the only way you can normally get your inheritance? When your dad dies. So what he's saying is, dad, I wish you were dead. I want nothing to do with you. We don't really know how things got to this point. This is just a story that Jesus was telling. We don't get a lot of backstory on the characters. 
But you can imagine, you can, you can use your imagination to fill in the blanks about how things got there. This son wanted nothing to do with his family and says, Dad, I wish you were dead. And what's the dad's response? Does he say, son, let's talk about this, right? I, I think this is a bad choice. He says, all right, I love you, and I wish you would do something different, but here you go. See, the dad gave his son the choice. As we move on, we see that the son, shortly thereafter, takes all that newfound wealth and he sets off for a distant land. And he very quickly spends all the money that he has on what the Bible calls wild living. And pretty soon he's broke. He's got nothing left. And when that happens, a famine sets in and there's no food. And the son starts to starve. And so he goes to a local farmer looking for work. And the farmer says, all right, you can go out and feed the pigs. And before long, as the son is out feeding the pigs and he's starving, he looks at the food that the pigs eat. And if you aren't familiar, pigs are pretty well notorious for eating anything that you will put in front of them. Anything. Whether it's rotten, whether it's trash, whether it's edible to humans, they'll eat whatever. And he looks at the pig's food and says, I want to eat that because I have nothing else. You see, his choices had brought him to, to the very bottom level, to rock bottom. And that's how it is with us sometimes. His choices left him broken. Right? Jesus is talking to the Pharisees here. And remember, the Pharisees upheld Jewish law as if there was nothing else important. And a pig was one of the most unclean animals. And so to be out feeding pigs, that was a despised and just the lowest of the low that you could possibly get. And here this son is feeding the pigs. That's how low he's sunk. And that's how it is with our choices. Our own poor decisions can leave us broken. And as we saw here, sometimes it's not just our own decisions. Like we saw with the mug, sometimes it's family life. Sometimes it's things that we have no control over. But sometimes, sometimes it's our own choices and our own sin that eat away at us and leave us broken. So as the son is at rock bottom, he sits there and he has this moment of clarity. The Bible says in verse 17, when he came to his senses, right? And he starts having this internal monologue with himself. And he says, how many of my father's own servants have more and have more food than what I have right now? So I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to say to him, father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. So make me like a servant and let me live out my life. Right, that's, And that's sometimes how we feel when we're broken. Things have eaten away and we are dealing with so much guilt and so much shame that we feel unworthy of love and unworthy of being forgiven. Right, Like I talked about with this blue plate, that sin that eats away at you to the point where you know in your heart that if anybody looked, saw that side of you, they would never look at you the same way. That's how the son was feeling here. He goes back to, he's going back to his own father and says, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. And so he sets off. And in, in our own lives, until we can learn to forgive ourselves, we're not going to be able to accept forgiveness from others. Right? Being able to accept forgiveness is the first step in being repaired. All right? A little bit later, I'll tell you some of my own story and how this came into play. But he had to deal with those feelings within, in himself. And we know he's feeling those because of what he says. He says, Father, I am not worthy. So he sets off and he goes back to his father. And his father sees him coming from a long way down the road. And what's his father do? Does his father just sit there and wait? No. His father takes off running and meets him on the road, wraps his arm around him and says, my son has come home. And the son gives his speech, Father, I'm not, I'm not worthy to be called your son. And the father says, nonsense. We're going to put a ring on your finger. We're going to grab a robe. We're going to kill the fattened calf. And we're going to celebrate because you're my son and you have come home. Now, as we continue, we see a little bit of a, a contrast here that I want to point out between the father and the older brother. Right? The father obviously represents God. And God offers us an unconditional forgiveness. And that's what the father offers to his son. But the older brother... He's not so easily forgiving. 
You see, as the party is going on and the older brother approaches the house and he hears the commotion, he says, what, what's going on? And somebody tells him that his younger brother has come home and he's angry. He goes and talks to his father and says, Father, I've, I've been by your side for all this time. I've done everything you've asked. And you've never once even given me so much as a goat to go and celebrate with my friends. And the father says, yes, you've been here and everything that I have is yours. But your brother has come home and that's worth celebrating. You see, the brother couldn't forgive, the older brother could not forgive his younger brother for what had happened. He said, why are we forgiving this man? Look how he hurt our family. Look at what he did. And the father says, yes, but look at where he is now. The bottom line tonight is that God uses broken people. God takes these pieces and puts them back together in a way that he can use. And if you don't believe me, we can just take a look at a lot of the characters throughout the Bible. All right? Noah. First thing he did after he got off the ark, maybe not first thing, but one of the first things, grew a vineyard and got wasted drunk. Abraham was a liar. Moses was a murderer. David was an adulterer and a murderer. You had Rahab, the prostitute living in Jericho, who helped the, the Jewish spies escape. You had Saul Paul in the New Testament, who before he became Paul, was literally killing Christians. And God said, you know what? <laughs> I can still use that. See, it doesn't matter how broken you are, God can still use you. So, if you still don't believe me, listen to my own story. Back in uh, 2018, in uh, February of that year, I made one of the worst decisions, nah, not one of the worst, I made the worst decision of my life and ended up getting arrested. Yeah, I see some shocked looks on the faces. It's true. I posted bail and I, and I, I went about my life and and I, I dealt with the shame and the guilt of that day for a long time. Fast forward a little bit to October of that year. And the shame and the guilt had kept eating away at me, little bit at a time, little bit at a time. Until eventually I was at my end. And one Sunday morning, I tried to commit suicide. I was done. I could not live with the guilt and the shame of what I had done anymore. And thankfully, God stopped me. Oddly enough, I even came to church that morning. I sat right over here. And it was one of those church services where maybe, you, maybe you've experienced this, where you go in and you're dealing with something heavy, and it feels like every song, every word that is spoken is meant just for you. That's how it was that day for me. And I sat right over there fighting back tears knowing what had just happened 45 minutes earlier. I remember, Wade, you were actually sitting about a row up from me across the aisle. And every ounce of me wanted to get up, tap you on the shoulder, and go back into the back into your office and talk. But at the same time, I knew that if I stopped for a second concentrating on fighting back the tears, I was going to lose it. And I couldn't let myself lose it like that in the middle of church. You see, I was broken. I was at my lowest point ever. And yet God was able to use me. And he can use you too. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you are in life right now. If you're at that point, please talk to your leaders. Any one of the leaders in this room would be more than happy to talk to you. God uses broken people. You see, God wants us to be with him. God created us to be with him. But our sin separates us from God. Right? God cannot be in the presence of sin. And when sin entered the world, it separated us from God. And our sins can't be removed by anything that we do. The only person who can put these pieces back together is God. Paying the price for sin, Jesus came and he died and he rose again. 
And everyone who believes in Jesus can have eternal life. And life eternal means you get to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. If you believe that here tonight, maybe you're hearing that for the first time. If you have questions, talk to a leader. Talk to a friend. Talk to somebody. Any one of the leaders in here, again, will be more than happy to talk, more than happy to answer questions. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this night. Lord, I don't know what, what all the students are going through in this room. I don't know the struggles. I don't know where they are in life. Lord, I pray that you will work through them, work in their brokenness to heal them, to use them, to use their pain to further your cause. Lord, I pray for these students as they go off to their small groups tonight. I pray that you will uh, allow them to feel comfortable, to open up and to share and that you will uh, just work with the leaders and, and give the, le the leaders wisdom as they guide the discussion this evening. Lord, we thank you for this night once again. In your name I pray. Amen.